So let me just quickly share uh, three rewards which are tied to action. And the lesson will be yours uh, tonight. The first is prayer. Uh, prayer is part of our, our faith as Christians. Uh, Jesus gave us a model prayer to, to follow in Matthew 6, verses 9 and following. Um, also in Luke verse 18, uh, chapter 18, verse 1, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus gave us um, a parable, a whole parable about prayer. And the point there he was making is that we should always pray and not faint or lose heart. And so Jesus taught prayer is important. We should always be uh, people of prayer. And the Bible does teach that our actions, our choices, play a role in how God considers our prayers. Um, think about 1 John chapter 3, verse 22, as well as chapter 5, verse 14. It says, Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things which are pleasing in his sight. And then it also says in that same epistle, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I think it's interesting in that, that first verse, it doesn't just say because we keep his commandments. Uh, it, he further elaborates and says, we do those things which are pleasing to him. So and again, I think that, that shows the motivation behind following the word of God. It shouldn't just be a, a mindless, well, I'm just keeping the commandments. I'm just following you know, if you give him a number, I'm just following commandment number one and I'm doing number two now. No, we ought to fulfill the commandments of God because we have a desire to be pleasing to him. We want to be pleasing to our heavenly father, the one who created us and gives us life. Uh, number two, one of the rewards, one of the benefits um, of action, of faithful action is health and well-being. Now, earlier I mentioned the reality of suffering. Right? Sinner or saint, guilty or innocent, everyone experiences suffering. So please do not you know, misunderstand me. I'm not saying if you have faith, you're guaranteed health and happiness. Uh, I don't believe that's the case. Again, Jesus would be the ultimate example of that. No one was ever more faithful than Christ, more perfect than him. And of course, he suffered a great deal. So I'm not saying this is a guarantee. Now, if all that out of the way, I, I believe there's the general truth that a person who puts the Bible's teachings into practice, that person will be healthier and happier than the person who does not. John 13, 17, if you know these things, happy are ye if you do them. Notice those words, if you do them. Happy is an interesting word. Happy is also translated as blessed. In Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus gives all those statements about blessedness, right? Matthew 5, 5, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It's the same Greek word. And so Jesus here is, is saying that you will be blessed, you will find happiness if you follow his teachings, if you follow his example. And again, that word in John three seventeen is so important. Again, not if we just think about them or talk about them, which is important. But if we do them, happy are ye if you do them. Proverbs 13, verse 15 says, Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Right? The Bible says those who are going to sin, transgress the will of God, that's not an easy life. That's not living the good life. The way of transgressors is hard. Almost everyone knows there are serious health risks from promiscuity, drugs and alcohol, other vices. And the person who acts on what the Bible says will never experience those hardships. You know, I will never have to explain to my wife that there's no money in our bank account because I've gambled it all away. Right? I'm never going to have to go to the doctor and worry about my liver because I decided to drink, you know... I don't even know what they come in. A thing of whiskey every day or something. I have no idea what amount they come in. But, you know, I don't worry about those things. That's never going to be a hardship in my life because I don't have a desire to do those things. You know, sin and vice create problems and hardships which can be avoided in by doing what the Bible says. And so as a general rule, again, looking at what Jesus said here, you're going to be happier 
you're going to be better off and generally speaking i know there's um, exclusions to that you know some people just unexplainably get cancer or, or something like that and that's sad when that happens but again generally speaking you're going to be happier and healthier if you reject the ideals of the world and instead you do the things taught by christ and then lastly regarding the rewards of faithful action uh, salvation so again there are physical rewards the way of transgressors is hard there are physical benefits to living a, a life of faith but of course there's spiritual benefits which are more important and longer lasting in matthew 7 21 christ said not everyone that saith unto me lord lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that you know, notice this word doeth right those who do the will of my father which is in heaven and it's just amazing to me that this is such a popular teaching nowadays you can turn on the radio and someone will say, call on Jesus as Lord, invite him into your heart, and then you know you're saved. And yet Jesus teaches the very opposite. You can't just call on me as Lord and think that's good enough. You have to be willing to do the will of my Father as well, he, he teaches us. You know, it is uh, popular today to water down the gospel in an attempt to make it more palatable. And so people in the religious world, they'll talk at length about faith, grace, and love. Again, nothing wrong with those things. But they'll, they'll focus so much on grace, for example, to the detriment of action. Action is where the rubber meets the road. If we have faith, if we cherish the grace of God, if we desire to love as Christ has loved, then it follows that we're going to act in accordance with those virtues. Uh, that we're going to have actions which are in line with faith, grace, and love. As I mentioned before, the devil has enough faith to quote scripture. Demons have faith in God. There's that saying, there's no atheist in a foxhole, right? Meaning that when someone's in a crisis, especially when they think their life's in danger, what do they start doing? You know, oh God, God help me, right? They're calling out to God. Well, that kind of faith is not sufficient. The Bible calls that dead faith. James 2 verse 22 teaches faith and action go together, hand in glove. And not only that, it says in James 2 22 that it's through action that faith is made perfect. You know, faith is brought to its, its completion. And so let us endeavor to put God's word into practice. Let us endeavor to have complete faith in him. Again, calling on Jesus as Lord, but also backing that up with how we live and how we behave as his followers.